Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Karishma. I'm um, the product manager in charge of the, our academic products here at MapleSoft. And today we're going to talk about you know, the math software solutions that keep up with your students. I'm really excited about this presentation. So there is a lot that I want to cover today. And as usual, I, I'm concerned I was a little uh, overly ambitious, but we're going to just dive right in and start. So the structure of the session is I have a little bit of PowerPoint. And if time permits, I actually want to get into the products um, to show you what we have to offer and um, what our math solutions are. Um, so I'm going to turn off my video and I'm going to share my screen. So for those of you who are new to MapleSoft, I wanted to spend the first few minutes just talking to you a little bit about MapleSoft. So MapleSoft is rooted in academia. In 1980, it started off as a research project at the University of Waterloo, and it actually uh, became a company in 1988. Um, and so during that time, we have built and expanded our flagship product, which is Maple. So Maple, as you'll see in a subsequent slide, you know, is math software that essentially allows you to solve any type of math problem you can throw at it. Um, and it's a hybrid, a symbolic numeric computation environment. And along with Maple, we also developed other products, which you'll see on our website um, to help, you know, the engineering market, um, the research market. So there's Maple Sim um, was another major uh, product that we launched. But in 2019, you know, we decided that we really wanted to start offering products or more products that were very student focused um, and teaching focused. So in 2019, we actually introduced the Maple Calculator. Um, and when we launched it, it was the Maple Companion. So I, I wanted to put that out there in case you, you are familiar with this. And we developed, it was our first time we developed a mobile app. Um, if you haven't tried it, it's a free mobile app that you can get on the Android or Apple Store. Um, and really that was our attempt, our first attempt at creating a mobile solution really geared to helping students and making math more accessible. And then just recently in 2021, uh, in January of 2021, we launched Maple Learn. And Maple Learn is a online version of Maple, but that's really focused on teaching and learning math from high school to first and second year university. And this allows us to create a product offering that goes from high school all the way up to university and beyond. And so we'll see this. Just a few notable accomplishments. Um, MapleSoft products are found in over 8,000 educational institutes, research labs, and companies. We have about a quarter of a million STEM students that use Maple. Um, and since the launch of the calculator, we've had over a million downloads with uh, 500,000 active users. So at MapleSoft, you know, we believe that math matters. So mathematics, it powers our modern world. You know, it allows us to optimize crop yields, to design sustainable products, to launch spacecrafts. Um, mathematics improves our lives and makes us safer and more efficient and more innovative. And so our mission at MapleSoft is really to provide powerful technology to explore, derive, capture, solve, and disseminate mathematical problems and their applications, and really to make math easier to learn, understand, and to use. Um, at MapleSoft, you know, we're helping more people tackle complex problems and we are driving research that pushes the boundaries and advances the state of mathematics. We are passionate about helping students, researchers, engineers, and scientists take advantage of the power of mathematics to enrich the world we live in. Um, and at MapleSoft, we really and truly believe that math matters and we're proud to have a real impact on the world around us. So that is our, our mission, our reason for being. And I wanted to, again, talk about this just to kind of frame our solutions and let you know a little bit about MapleSoft, the company. One of the things that we're trying to do, and often I hear this um, in talking to a lot of you know, students, they'll say, math is hard. Um, I often hear from a lot of the, the girls I tutor, boys are better at math. I don't like math. I'm not a math person. Math is not in my DNA. Math stresses me out. And I'm sure as the educators kind of amongst you attending this presentation, you'll likely have heard this as well. But one of the things that we're striving to do, and I'll let you be the judge if we've accomplished that, 
is to change this mantra that, that students kind of just say over and over in their head. And I want it to become, math is cool. Maybe I'll be a mathematician. Now I get it. It's not that bad. Math is for everyone. So that is something we are trying to do, especially with our products, Maple Calculator and Maple Learn. We want to start and engage students earlier and make sure that these phrases that they say over and over in their mind, we can replace them with positive um, phrases about math and, and give them the confidence to believe that they can do this. So as educators, you know, I will say you probably have the hardest job uh, of any, and especially this past year, or I should say 18 months with the pandemic, I mean, I give teachers so much credit. It was incredibly hard. And, you know, teaching math is hard. But in talking to a lot of educators and teachers, it's enjoyable. You wouldn't be doing this if you didn't enjoy it. It's rewarding. But when you have that moment where a student gets the concept or, you know, that your class, everybody raises their hand, I would say um, it is definitely rewarding. And it's important. What you do is very, very important. And what we want to do is kind of give you tools that can make life a little bit easier. So teaching math is not as hard. So let's talk about, you know, what are the right tools? What makes a good tool? I believe a good tool, it needs to be easy. It needs to be easy to use, to learn. Um, you know, you can't, I find with teachers um, and educators that I speak with, one of the things I hear is you have such a short time to really explain um, a, a, a fairly large curriculum. And so you can't afford the time to teach the students a tool. So the tool needs to be easy and it needs to be easy for you to create your content. It needs to be powerful. The right tool should be able to help you explain um, any topic in the way that would engage your students. And ultimately, you know your students, you know what clicks. So the tool needs to be powerful. It needs to be very flexible, right? Like it needs to be able to help you go from teaching high school content all the way up to university content. And the needs of students from high school to university, they vary. So the way you would introduce a concept is very different in high school, I should say, is very different from how you would introduce it at a university level. It has to be useful, of course. Um, I laugh at this one because prior to launching Calculator and Learn, we've had extensive beta periods and a lot of students have been involved in these beta periods. And one of the things they said was, you know, UI is important, but ultimately it has to be useful. We're not gonna use it if it's not useful. It needs to be popular. Um, students and educators, you know, you need to see that other students are engaging with it. There has to be a community around these tools. Um, and it also has to be tools that will carry students from high school to university and beyond. And it needs to be interactive. So while I'm not a teacher, I do have some experience as a tutor. And one thing I've noticed and other um, educators that I've spoken to have kind of echoed is that when a student can play with the math, interact with the math, see what happens as they parameterize um, an expression. Those are generally the moments where they start to get things and then they can go to the next step. So it needs to be interactive, but creating these interactive these animations, it needs to again, be easy to do. The other thing about the right tools, it needs to be available. You know, it has to be available on desktops laptops, Chromebooks, um, web browsers, mobile. One of the things that we're seeing is that, you know, students access, have access to all of these tools. Um, and so they need to use them kind of on the device that they are using just in time. Alternatively, um, so these are students who have access to all of these tools. There are some students who only access to, um, you know, maybe a tablet or their phone. And so we need to create tools that allow them to understand and appreciate um, mathematics on the devices that they have at hand. So at MapleSoft, we're on a mission. I told you this earlier, the right tools, they need to be easy, useful, interactive, available, flexible, powerful, popular. I realize now that those are probably in different order than I presented earlier. 
But our mission is to extend this at MapleSoft. One of the things we're trying to do is to go from easy to actually enjoyable. So not only does it have to be easy, we want to make it enjoyable. Not only does it have to be useful, it has to be indispensable. When students or teachers um, have a question or are trying to explain something, they have to be able to turn to this tool and just use it. It needs to be part of the curriculum. It needs to be part of how students learn. It has to be interactive, but it also has to be fun. Available, it needs to be everywhere. It needs to be able to exist and work where students are, where educators with the tools that educators use. It has to be flexible, but more than flexible, you need the power to make it individualized so students can learn based on how they learn best. Some students are very visual. Others, you know, prefer to kind of work through a problem and have their side calculations and, and highlight things and kind of work through it iteratively. It really needs to be individualized. Powerful, I think one of the most important things is that power needs to be tailored to your needs. I mentioned this earlier. One of the things with teaching concepts to a high school student, the way you would teach that, the way you would introduce that is very different than how you would introduce that to um, somebody who's at a college or somebody who's at university. Even within the grades in high school, the way you would talk about a concept, let's say, or introduce a concept in grade nine is different than how you would do it in grade 12. And so we have to be able to access this power, but in a way that meets your needs. And popular, oh, I want this, you know, I want the tools that we create to be omnipresent. I want it to be everywhere. So I want to now talk about, you know, the Maple Math Suite. All of you have come to hear this and hear a little bit about our tools. So we offer um, solutions that help students starting from high school all the way to university. And those are Maple, Maple Learn, Maple Calculator, and Maple Cloud. It's, a, it's a, an ecosystem of tools or a suite of tools, I should say, that really allow you as the educator to kind of take advantage of different technology and use it how you see fit. So the other thing I love about um, this suite is they communicate with each other. So you can use Maple in the classroom to explain a concept, but Maple is very powerful. So let's say, you know, you want something a little bit more um, streamlined for your students. Well, you can use Maple Learn and they connect. Same with Maple Calculator. Maple Calculator connects to Maple and Maple Learn. And all of this, um, all this content is basically, um, you can access it through the Maple Cloud online. So in the Maple Cloud, you can actually run a Maple Learn sheet and interact with it. Any Maple Learn document that you create is saved to the cloud. So you can access it anywhere on any device. Um, same with Maple Calculator, take a picture of math and you can upload it to the cloud so you can use it in Maple and Maple Learn. Um, so these are our suite of products. And what makes me so excited is I think with this, a student at high school can start kind of with a very simplified experience with the Maple Cloud Calculator and graduate to Maple Learn and then graduate to Maple. And at each time there's a tool um, that they're learning. And as they progress through their career, it becomes less daunting. You know, introducing Maple to a university student while very powerful and educators love it. You know, often students, there's so much that they have um, in front of them and it can be a little bit daunting. But if that student has been introduced to Calculator and Maple Learn, then the learning curve to using Maple um, has been reduced. And so that is our, uh, in a nutshell, our solution. So from high school up until university, we have a product um, that will likely meet your needs. So for those of you, again, who are new, I want to talk a little bit about Maple. Maple is desktop software that combines the world's most powerful mathematics engine with a really easy to use interface to sophisticated programming language and education specific features, um, extensive connectivity and documentation tools. And we'll actually see Maple in action. But Maple has over 5,000 different functions covering virtually every area of mathematics. So algebra, calculus, differential equations, number theory, theoretical physics, finance, integral transforms, differential geometry, 
I mean, the list goes on and on. Like I said, our roots are in academia. And so we have had extensive time to build this tool. And for the longest time, you know, Maple was used um, by research. It's used um, by NASA as well as other um, institutions. And it's also been used a lot by university um, professors, university students. The Maple computation engine, it combines numeric computations with the world leading symbolic capabilities. In product, um, I love Maple, you know, and I wish as a student I had been introduced to Maple when I was in engineering school, you know, our point and click learning tools. So the idea is you can write an expression exactly the way you would find it in a textbook or your notebook, and then you can have access to different commands via this context panel. Maple comes built with different tutors and math apps, uh, which are interactive applications for topics in pre-calculus and calculus one, all the way to calculus three, linear algebra, um, statistics. In terms of teaching and learning, Maple comes with a lot of student packages um, to really help kind of focus in that environment to make sure that just the, the commands and the functions that students need are accessible. And there's a wealth of external resources to support teaching and learning. So we have eBooks, um, we have a student teacher and resource center, we have Maple Primes. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the product as well as outside of the product. And in uh, the demo, I'll show you kind of a list of some of these products. The next one I wanna talk about is Maple Learn. Oops, let's go back. There's supposed to be a little, there we go. So we introduced Maple Learn, like I said, in January, 2021. And we did it because after years of working with educators and students, one of the things that we found is, you know, people love Maple, but there is still a learning curve. With all of that power, as much as we've done to try to simplify it and make things easy to use and have all of these student packages, for students especially kind of, um, you know, first being introduced to math concepts at the high school level, or for students who, um, you know, are going into university but have never been familiar with math tools, it can be daunting. And so with Maple Learn, you know, what we wanted to do is create an environment that's extremely easy to use, that only has the commands, um, or in fact, you'll see it's virtually commandless, but only has the things that students need in order to work through a problem. Maple Learn, one of the, the key differentiators from other math tools out there is that allows you to solve a problem line by line, just as you would in your notebook. You know, a student can check individual steps as well as the final result, perform side calculations, and easily share their work with their teacher, tutor, or classmates if they need any help. Now for instructors, Maple Learn provides a really engaging demonstration environment that supports illuminating graphs, the ability to work through examples using a combination of manual and automated steps performed by Maple Learn easy parameterization of expiration, uh, expressions um, and exploration of concepts. Um, so you'll see this in action, but really with Maple Learn, you know, things that I mentioned, you can create easily create sliders for any expression in order to parameterize it. You can solve the problem, as I mentioned, step by step or with the click of a button. In terms of the math, you know, Maple Learn allows you to solve polynomials, um, row reduce, uh, road reducing matrices, limits, calculating derivatives, derivatives, solving integrals, differential equations, and so much more. In fact, we're constantly adding functionality into Maple Learn, really trying to create that tool that will help students and educators from high school all the way up to first, second year university. And the reason we only we, we aim to go to those first two levels is because after that, generally, students need to be exposed to um, the power of Maple, right? They're doing more complex calculations, let's say vector calculus. And they, they probably need a tool um, that allows them to do more as well as a programming environment. And so students can go from Maple Learn and graduate into Maple. One of the other things that I wanna talk about here is that I know there's a lot of people who love Maple and I love it as well. And they say, you know, I have a lot of my content in Maple or is there a way to take my content in Maple and offer it in Maple Learn? And one of the things that we've built is the ability to be able to create um, scripts in Maple that can be deployed to Maple Learn. And I'll show you a few examples of this as we go on. 
but that's something that we're finding a lot of Maple users who you know, have used Maple over the past 30 years are really excited uh, about. And um, so the ability to go from Maple to Maple Learn. And similarly in this picture, you'll see you're going from the calculator all the way to Maple Learn. And I'll see this in an example. Lastly, let's talk about the calculator. So the calculator, as I mentioned, we launched in 2019. It allows you to enter a handwritten expression and with a click of your camera, um, the problem kind of is in typeset math in the calculator. You can solve for integrals, factor polynomials, invert matrices, um, solve system equations, solve differential equations. And one of the things um, that we introduced kind of a month or two ago is the ability to view steps. Everything in the Maple calculator, as well as Maple Learn itself, is powered by the Maple engine. So we can do a whole lot of things in the Maple calculator and Maple Learn. Um, in fact, the, one of the things we've had to kind of be mindful of is, you know, exposing too much of that power, right? We still want to make it easy to use. So I encourage you, if you have feedback, things you would like to see, let me know. With the Maple calculator, you can actually visualize 2D and 3D graphs. Um, and you can instantly send your result to Maple and Maple Learn. And as I said, we have a rapidly increasing user base. And as of now, we have over 500,000 active users. Let's kind of conclude the PowerPoint. And I know I went a little bit quickly. Um, this will be recorded so you can go back and, and take a look for reference. The reason is I feel like, you know, for those of you who are new to MapleSoft and our products, I wanted to spend a few minutes showing you the products in action. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up, this is Maple. And as I mentioned before, Maple is desktop um, Mac software. So here's Maple. And one of the things I quickly wanted to point out um, in the interface is that it provides you with this document environment. You know, we've uh, called it a technical document environment or a smart document environment. You can have images and text, hyperlinks, so you can organize your work. Um, over here, I have everything what's called as a workbook. But I'm going to show you Maple through the lens of um, teaching and learning math. So let's go to this first one. Now, earlier in my PowerPoint, I talked about the concept of clickable math. So I want to talk to you what I mean. So here, the way I'm going to show this is through a series of different examples. So one of the things that Maple um, has to make it easy, we have over a thousand expressions and symbols within our palette. So over here. And this makes it really easy for a student or an educator to enter in a mathematical expression. Now, once you enter in these mathematical expressions, you can then perform operations on them without having to really know any of the commands through the context panel. So let's see how you do this. So this first question, it says, find the derivative of a function and plot the derivative along uh, with the function. So let's go and enter this. I'm just going to enter it with my keyboard. And now all over and let's go to the palette and we can pull up this. So, and now what I'm going to do is you notice as soon as I type this, you'll see this context panel. So in the context panel, I can say, let's differentiate this with respect to x. And here's the solution. And now I can say, let's go ahead and plot this. One or two D plot. And here's my plot. So notice I didn't have to know any of the commands. I just used the context panel. And the context panel changes. The operations that are available in the context panel actually change um, depending on the input. So now let's say I want to plot, you know, this is the derivative of the function. And I can, of course, annotate this with the toolbar and, and the features in this toolbar. But let's say here I want the input. I'm going to just highlight this. And I'm going to drag and drop this expression. And here we go and have the input. Now I have the input curve and the output. Something else that we could do is I can click on this. And I can say, show me the command. This is a great way to have students kind of start to learn the Maple command language. As I said, we have over 5,000 different commands and functions within Maple. So one of the things they can do is look at this and say, OK, well, this is the diff command. Um, and of course, the, the diff command is very popular, but they can click on this 
and they can bring up the help system uh, for this command or any of the commands uh, by clicking on F2. And now if I click on this, let me actually do that. So here's the help page for this command. And you can see all the different options. Um, and one of the things I love is all of the examples. You get different examples on how to use this. And you can do this, like I say, you can pull up uh, the help page for any command just by clicking on F2. So I'm going to collapse this and here it is nice and clean. Now in terms of our student packages, like I said, Maple comes with a number of student packages that help really reinforce concepts that are taught in the classroom. So there's the student basics package, calculus, linear algebra, multivariate calculus, numerical analysis, pre-calculus, statistics, vector calculus, and one that I just noted that I've omitted on this table is uh, a new uh, student package that we launched in 2021, which is the student ordinary differential equations uh, packet for helping um, students and educators, you know, with presenting the concepts and solving differential equations, ordinary differential equations. Um, and so all of these packages, if I go to tools over here, you can see tutors, they're all organized. So you can see all of the different tutors that are available um, with these packages. So you can click on them too. But let me go ahead and again, show you an example. So I'm going to kind of load all of the different functions in the student calculus package. And I've done that here. In fact, if we get rid of this, these are all of the different commands that are available in the student calculus um, sub package. And so this question, I should have read the question, says, you know, use a Riemann sum to find the area bounded by the x-axis and the graph of the curve corresponding to six plus x minus x squared. Now I've entered it here just for uh, the sake of um, speed. You could type this in. Uh, if you are playing with maple, just uh, x squared, you get it by doing shift six, the little caret symbol on your keyboard. I think on uh, Mac, it's command six. But here, the first thing I wanna do is find the x intercepts. So again, I can go to the context panel. I'm gonna go to solve and click on. And here's my solution. And now I want to get the Riemann sum tutor. I'm going to click on this. Notice something here, which I should have pointed out, is as soon as I load any of the student packages, any of the commands that are in the student package are available through the context panel. So now here I can click on this and a student can go to tutors and click on Riemann sum. So this will open up. It's opened up on my other screen. I'm going to put this here. And now I can change this. So we want to go from minus two two, three. Let's keep this in and we can click on display and you see it. Now I can animate. I can see as I increase the number of partitions, I get a better uh, approximation of the area. And of course I can look at the upper Riemann sum and compare it to, you no, know, uh, sorry, upper Riemann sum and compare it to lower. And here I get the approximate area, the actual area one of the things that we try to do is always, you know, make sure that students kind of see or instructors see the command. So if they want to start kind of um, transitioning from context panel to commands to have more control, um, see more options, they can do. And at this point, I can go ahead and um, when I close this, you'll see that here it is, it's embedded into my Maple document. The next one is to use Gauss-Jordan elimination to solve the following um, system of equations. Here's my system of equations. This time I'm going to go and load the student linear algebra packet. You can do this in multiple ways. Here I've just typed it out. It's with um, the student linear algebra package, but you can also go to tools. And if I go to load package, you'll see a list of all of the different packages and I can click on it. So I'll click on that. Here we have um, all of the different equations. And I just drag these into a, um, a single line. Now I'm going to go to constructions. Click on this. Constructions. And sorry, I want to go to student linear algebra. Constructions. Generate matrix. Augment. And a little pop-up dialog comes up and I can say X, Y, Z. And here it is. So I have it in matrix form, like this. 
I can drag it here. And now I can go again to student linear algebra and I can go to um, solvers and I can ask for row echelon and reduce row echelon. Again, there's also tutors to help me work through this. Um, and there's a bunch of different things um, that I can do here. I'm just and it will um, give me the solution. Now, if I had gone through the tutor, I could have actually gone ahead and worked through this problem step by step. Um, and I'll actually, this is the result of the Gaussian elimination. Let me pull this up so you can see it. So here's what the tutor looks like, and it gives you different choices on how to do it. Um, again, for the sake of time, I'll show you, you could click on next to get the next step. It explains what's been done. I can say all steps. I can go at any point and edit the matrix if I want to. When I close, it will return this to my document. So that's a little bit about Maple and you know this clickable math uh, functionality that I mentioned. So one of the things I told you about the right tool is it needs to be interactive. It needs to be allow students to really explore a concept. So here I want to just touch upon some of the ways that you can do that in Maple. So with Maple built into the product, we have a bunch of different um, practice sheets. So let me pull up the help page. I'm uh, sorry, the, the document here, and this shows you how to create an interactive practice sheet. You can create it on different um, things. So let's say on factoring, and you can change things here. And I can click on generate. And I'll get a little bit of a, I'll get a factoring practice worksheet and the student can check their work or get a new sheet. And this can of course be uploaded into the Maple Cloud so that students can access it easily. Um, and this, the assistant over here, one of the things we're, we're working on is actually, there's a lot more in terms of the practice sheets that you can do outside of the uh, assistant. So I would tell you to look at the help page if you're interested and we are going to be, um, kind of refining the assistant to provide or um, give you access to more of that functionality through this environment. So explore, I think this has to be one of my top five favorite features in Maple. So here I can put any you know, expression, parameterized expression. I'm gonna go to the context panel, A little pop-up is gonna come up and I wanna say, I wanna explore this for k, so you go from, let's say, 1 to 10. And I'm going to, I can return the command as well, but I'm going to click on Explore. And this little um, interactive widget pops up. Uh, I was embedded into my document. And now I get a slider, and I can start moving. And I can see kind of what happens as k is varied. The nice thing about the Explore command is it can also be used on uh, programs and functions that you write. So it's not just restricted to single expressions. So here is another one. I'm going to, this I'm showing you how you can call it with the command. So I'm going to say, uh, load the fractals uh, package. And all of these packages, while I use this terminology, it all comes with Maple, it's built into Maple. So it's not like you're paying any more for any of these packages. It's just a way to help organize all the commands. Click on explore and here's the command for it. And now I've said I want a little animation as well as sliders. So I can click on this animation um, and you can see at any point I can pause. I can manually go in if I want to. Um, it takes a little bit of time. Well, as if I am over Zoom, so you can see that. In terms of interactive content, so another thing we have in Maple, if you go to the palette here, is we have a component palette. It allows you to add in dials and sliders and knobs to create these interactive applications. But here I have a simple one um, where if I move the slider, you'll see that the plot changes as well as these function and derivative. I can do this. Um, I can do this. And so again, something really simple, if I click on this, uh, I can look at this context panel, makes it easy for me to kind of look at any of the code. Um, over here, I can look at edit change value code. You can see little, um, again, document 
a dialog, I should say, pops up and I can see some of the code that's used to create. These. And, you know, it can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. And a lot of these interactive components are used um, with our different math applications. So in the product, we created, uh, I believe, you know, I actually think this value has actually changed. Uh, but at the time of creating this document, we had over 500 different math apps. Um, so I'm going to click on it. Here's the overview page for all of the different math apps organized by subject. You can look at it and you can play with them. So let's take a look at this one. So each of the math app kind of starts off with a main concept and then it has this interactive uh, area. So you can choose a function, here it is. Um, and this place kind of play with the over here. So this is one of the math apps. Another one, let me show you Go back here, is this is from uh, the statistics subcategory of our math apps. So this is again, rolling two dice and looking at the probability. So this is another one so you can say, okay, what's the probability that the left die is one, the right die is four, and you can see as that changes over here and you can see that the probability changes and you have this little interactive um, application. And so what a lot of educators will do is they'll use these um, applications as a starting point for a discussion on this topic. Uh, so that's nice. I would tell you again to take a look at the math apps uh, and play with them. You can of course tweak them um, with a bit of maple code. And the last thing I wanna show uh, just for sake of time is some of the resources. So I told you we have math apps. We actually have the Maple Portal. The Maple Portal, again, is a great way um, for kind of walking you through the steps of using Maple. So this is for, you know, when we have uh, educators who really want to use Maple in the classroom, they can kind of go through this and assign it to their students in order to get them to become more familiar with Maple. We also have a client success team that offers um, what we call as boot camps to kind of help students uh, get up uh, to speed with Maple. We also offer a uh, Maple ready readiness assessment. So if you're interested in any of these, you know, I'd encourage you to contact our client success team, your account manager, or just email us at info at maple.com. Um, resources for learning Maple. So we have a bunch of videos. So we have training videos, and this is all on our website over here. So it talks about new users, um, Maple Training for Educators, it's a recorded webinar. So lots of different things, as well as videos on presenting and teaching different topics. Let me talk about the fundamentals guide. Great way to start, oh, this is the video, apologies. So that was the video, but we also have a PDF version of the guide. And this is something that, again, can, you can work through at your own pace to get more familiar with Maple or if you're somebody who prefers to uh, watch a video, you could go ahead and, and watch this webinar or um, this tutorial. Um, so again, we have the Teacher Resource Center, Teaching Concepts with Maple. Let me show you this, because this is one where a lot of uh, educators love this. So this was actually created by Dr. Robert Lopez. Um, and he, uh, for years, taught at Rose Hillman. And, created a lot of this content. And what I love about this content, again, it's organized by different topics. Let's click one just to show you. Each one comes with a video, as well as the Maple document um, that was used in the video. And it kind of talks to you a little bit about if you wanted to watch the Teaching Concepts with Maple webinar, you can do that. Great resource um, as an educator kind of wanting to use Maple and it provides you with the starting point. And there's a bunch of different study guides and eBooks. In fact, there's three study guides, pre-calculus study guide, calculus study guide, and multivariate study guide. Um, they were all added to Maple 2021. So if you go into the help system, you can get all of this different content. We also have a bunch of different books and textbooks, so I'd encourage you to take a look. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about these resources, again, contact us at info at maplesoft.com. So that's Maple in a nutshell. And for the sake of time, I want to quickly show you Maple Learn. 
let's start Maple Learn kind of from the beginning. So this is the Maple Learn environment. In the Maple Learn environment, this is accessed through a web browser. I'm using Chrome. Um, so Maple Learn, first and foremost, is kind of divided up into three parts. So here you have the equivalent of what would be like the palettes in Maple. So you have different palettes to help you again enter in any expression. You have this area, which is the canvas. Um, and you'll see this is where you kind of work through math problems. And then this area over here is where you get a live plot as well as that context panel. Um, so one thing kind of before I go any further, you know, if you're curious to try MapleLearn, MapleLearn is completely free. Go to learn.maplesoft.com and you'll get straight to uh, the product. Go ahead and use it. If you create an account, you'll be able to share, uh, save your documents. Um, so that's just one of the reasons to do it. We actually have a basic tier and the premium tier, which essentially unlocks um, any of the uh, kind of save or daily limit restrictions. But otherwise it's free to use. You don't even have to log in. And I would encourage you to try this out as well as um, let your students play with it. If you have any feedback, please send it to me. But let me show you how you can do this. So here, enter in some math. I'm gonna enter the expression x plus three. Notice as I do that, automatically I get a plot in this live plot view and I have a context panel similar to what you saw in Maple. I'm going to go ahead and add in another expression x squared plus 3x minus 5. Again no plot commands, no nothing, I just type it in and I get that. So here's the plot view like this and I want to show it to you. Bring that down. I can click on this little button and it'll show me kind of any special points, um, intersection points, as well as y and x intercepts. So here's the plot view. Now, of course, a student could work through this and solve it line by line. So how would you do this? One way that I suggest is you can click this and I would go here. All I'm gonna do, put these on the same line so I can call the context panel and I can say, here it is. And notice every time I put an expression, it's plotting it. So here I'm going to click on this quick action button, say exclude from plot. So here's just the map. And I'm going to, I could block the expression if I wanted to have this in the actual, um, what we call these as groups. But here I'm going to actually say, uh, why is that not? Oh. Where's my mind? So I can, I have to equate these. So here I'm gonna go ahead and equate them because I wanna solve for these intersection points. And I'm gonna click on solve and you'll see right away I get the solution. I also have access to steps um, as a student if I wanna see it. But let's say I want to work through this problem kind of step by step. Here's how you could do it. I'm gonna go create another group. So here's another group. You can put these anywhere on the canvas that you want. And now I'm gonna type in x plus three equals x squared. I should have just copied and pasted, but it's okay. Um, and now I can go ahead and go to the next line. And so the difference here is that we're not actually evaluating anything automatically. A student or an uh, instructor has to go to the context panel and say, okay, I want the solution. Otherwise you can just work through it. I can say, here's the calculated result, so I don't have to retype. Um, and now I can go ahead and let's say, factor this if I wanted to. So I can take the expression here. Let me go ahead and do that. That's good. So I could go, I could factor the expression, or I could do it as a student, I can work through this myself. So here's the expression. I might want to go ahead and rewrite this. So minus x squared minus 2x plus 3 is over here. And now let's say I'm trying to factor this. So maybe I want two numbers that multiply out to negative 8. Another side calculation. And I can have text as well. So I'm going to say, well, multiply to eight and add to negative two. And you'll, you'll wonder here is because this is uh, still a math cell, but I can go ahead and 
click the space bar, converts it to text. And now, in order to do this, what I like to do, um, everybody has their own way just to show you to add a table. So I'm going to add a table over here. And let me go ahead and put the columns. So we're looking for, in this case, um, two numbers. I generally call them oops, M, N, and we want M times N, and we want N. Oops. So here I could say, okay, let's look at, you know, what multiplies out to negative eight, one, negative eight, the results are automatically calculated over here. At any point, if I don't want to see this, I can close this plot window. And here it is, and I have more room. And I can do another one, negative one, let's say, and eight. That's not the right answer. And then, you know, maybe we try two negative four, you can see, okay, that's the correct answer. Go back here and I can start, I can enter it. And if I wanted to check that I did this correctly, I can click here and go back in from the context panel and get the result. And I can compare and good, I got it right. So that's just something for you to, to keep in mind. So this is our first um, example. Let me show you another example. So in this next example, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, an example to compute the limit. So one of the things that's important is like we've mentioned before, you know, things need to be interactive. They also have to be uh, visual, but we want students to really be able to explore and kind of work through a problem. So here we're gonna use example of computing a limit. So let's go ahead and I'm actually for the sake of time I'm going to copy this and have it for reference. So determine the limit as x approaches 1 for the following function. So first thing we might do over here is let's visualize this function. We can do that I'm going to copy or I'm going to type in the function say so x squared minus one. Notice it's automatically kind of plotting as I type. Here it is. I get my plot right away. If I want to assign this to a function, I can do that with the light bulb, convert to assignment, pull and equal is the notation. And now I see this. Let's go ahead and let's look at point. So we can see just by looking at the graph that the function is undefined at x equals to one, but the limit still exists. So let's go here. One of the nice things is you can easily evaluate this. So let's look at the value f of at negative one. It evaluates, okay, so it's zero. That confirms our results over here. And of course you can click on it and get the value. Now let's change this and let's put in an arbitrary value. So let's do equal to zero. Notice as soon as I assign a value, a numeric value to a variable, I get a slider. You don't have to do anything. I can change this now to x. And here's my slider. And I can go and I can move the slider. And we can see, let's say I want to actually have this point, a movable point on my curve. Well, MapleLearn comes with um, a bunch of primitives or commands for doing uh, kind of creating vectors and segments. But here, I'm going to create a point. I want a point on my plot, and I'm going to be at f of x. So here it is. Of course, you can't see it. Let me move my slider. In fact, here we go. So here it is. And now I can move this. Oops. Sure. You can see I'm moving my slider, and I can the value x, and if you go back and look at this in group one, you'll notice that these values update. And of course I can use here, I can specify the number of decimal places I've just left the default in for now. This is one way to do it. And now you can see, okay, well, what happens? What's the limit as you get really close to one? So 0 0.9999. Okay, I can go and it's 0 0.667. And because everything here is driven by maple, 
you know, I can go to the context panel and say, well, identify the exact value. So it'll tell you it's two thirds. Um, and so this is kind of one way that we can do it. Now, something else I wanna show is this is graphically, and this is great, but I find, you know, sometimes you want a student to work through solving this problem algebraically. So how would they do it in MapleLearn? So here, I'm gonna take this expression. I'm going to copy it. Let's go and create a group. So here it is. And of course, I can, um, I want the limit of this. Let's put this in here, let me add some brackets. And I'm going to go to functions, limit. So here it is, and I can say, use the context panel and say, well, evaluate the limit. And I see two thirds, which corresponds to what we got. But now let's say I want a student to work through this. How would we do it? Well, a student would start you know, with the function and kind of work through it line by line. But one of the things I want to show you is how you could actually do this with the Maple calculator. So one way to do this, um, and just for the sake of time, I won't show the Maple calculator, but I actually went to Ted and took a picture of all of my worked out problem like this. And I'm gonna click this. Here it is. And you can see step by step everything that I've done. And you'll notice here, I purposely made a mistake because generally what I've noticed is students will often, not always, just apply by rote kind of, okay, well, this is how you solve this type of problem. This is what I'm going to do without maybe fully understanding the function. And so then they can look at this and they can say, okay, well, where, where did I make my mistake? So they might say, okay, did I do a, a mistake over here? Did I check here? They can evaluate the limit. See, they're getting they evaluated here. They're seeing, so somewhere they made a mistake and now the mistake is because they didn't factor. So that's kind of uh, some of Maple Learn. Other things that I wanted to show you is here I have a table. I can click on regression. It puts a line. I can move these pointers or these points, I should say. Um, and the value changes. I can change this if I wanted to over here, go back to my, and say, give me a polynomial regression to same thing. And now of course I could go ahead and use Maple Learn to see the error and kind of define which one gives me a better fit. Templates, so this is what I love. Another one you could do is here's a Maple Learn document, text math. I could go ahead, share this. Um, it creates a link and I can share this with my students. Um, and this kind of helps them in this case integration by parts. So what they have to do is look at this and define well, what's x, sorry, what's u, what's dv, so x, and d 2 x. That's the goal of this document. Click on this. It'll automatically evaluate and you can see the result. So that's a, a kind of how you can use Maple Learn as a template for allowing a student to practice a concept. Here's another document that I created, um, finding the area of the under of a curve, and you can actually display the shaded area. Practice sheet, same as you did in Maple. I actually created a script in Maple, and then I can deploy it to create practice sheets. This one's factoring, can do it for anything in Maple Learn. Um, and last thing, just for the sake of time, that I wanted to show you is word problems. Maple Learn is great for word problems. Again, you can have a slider. This was compound interest. So you can see uh, they changed my principal. And as I change, of course, the interest rate, um, what the value is after 20 years. But I encourage you to take a look at the example gallery. I went very quickly and I kind of warned you that, about that. But if you go to learn.maplesoft.com, click on see all examples, and we have this example gallery. And there's over a hundred different examples here organized by topic. Take a look um, and use this as a starting point. So I'll just put one, pull this one up click on it and um, and all of these are structured differently. They're really examples to kind of help you get started with learn. So this one's about Taylor series approximation and sliders. You can change this. And at any point, if I change the document and want to kind of reset it, I can click this button here and it resets the document. So that kind of, I went very quickly. Once again, thank you so much. And I'm uh, Karishma Pawani. Have a good day.